Hi, I'm Scott Simpson. How do you deal with medical gaslighting? If you're living with one of the chronic illnesses, the medical system mostly dismisses or denies or gaslights like ME-CFS or fibromyalgia or chronic Lyme, multiple chemical sensitivity, vaccine injury, long COVID or any of the other diseases, the medical system pushes to the side. In all likelihood, you've had at least one experience of a doctor dismissing your physical symptoms and attributing them to psychological problems like depression, anxiety, or some other mood disorder. It can be traumatic to be disbelieved, especially when you're sick and vulnerable. It can feel like a betrayal by the doctor, and if it happens frequently enough, it can feel like a betrayal by the entire medical system. Once this gaslighting happens, it is natural to feel reluctant to trust any doctor until they have proven that they can be trusted. So it is normal and expected to feel suspicious and anxious when returning to see a doctor who previously gaslighted you, or when you're seeing a new doctor and you don't know their opinion of your illness. So how do you protect yourself from harm and trauma when being gaslighted by a doctor. Keeping in mind that doctors have incredible power over our future access to appropriate health care. They may poison your medical record and that may taint any future doctor's view of you. So it becomes imperative for us to try to manage our relationships with our health care providers in order to keep access to treatment open. It's an upside down world when it's patients who have to manage the egos and emotions in order to remain safe and decrease harm and also to keep access to healthcare open. And because people like working with people they like, it's really important that we present the most likable and charming version of ourselves in our medical appointments. Perhaps most importantly, is to practice rational and respectful responses for when you're being gaslit. It can be very difficult in the moment to remain grounded when you've just been attacked and harmed by your doctor. So having those responses already formulated can help overcome the anger and fear that you will experience when you're being gaslit. So what about when you're seeing a new doctor? Because our illnesses are medically marginalized, there are very few specialists who know about our illnesses. Instead, because the medical system is so siloed, we are shipped off to a bunch of different specialists. Few, if any, know anything about our illness. And most of them have been trained to get those people out of your office so you can look after people who are really sick. So one strategy, if you're seeing a new doctor or specialist and they don't have access to your medical records, is to not disclose your illness, but only disclose your symptoms. This may protect you from disease discrimination and the gaslighting that comes with it, but still access to symptom treatment. For example, I had a client who was very sick, mostly bed bound. And she came from an academic background, so she had research skills. She took a look at her test results and her unique set of symptoms, and it pointed to a rare genetic disease. But she had been gaslit so many times over the years that she knew that once she got in front of a specialist who could diagnose this disease, that her best bet was to not disclose that about what she suspected about a rare genetic disease, but instead only told him about her symptoms. He pieced together her symptoms, made the diagnosis of this rare genetic disease, was quite pleased with himself. She feigned ignorance about even knowing about this disease. He prescribed medications. She got access to health care, and now she's back to work full time. So in some instances, it can be advantageous to not disclose your illness, but only disclose the symptoms that you experience. Another strategy is to take another person with you to the appointment, and this can be helpful in a number of ways. They can provide moral and emotional support before, during, and after the appointment. 
They can also act as a memory aid. Sometimes we receive so much information, some of it quite technical during an appointment, that it can be helpful to have another set of ears listening to what's going on, and perhaps they're the one who are taking notes. So the other benefit of having a person in the room with you is that they act as a witness to any denial, dismissal, or gaslighting that you may experience. Some folks report that having somebody else at the appointment with them actually decreases the intensity of gaslighting that they may experience. And it's also very validating to have someone else witness the harm that you have experienced. It can be hard for people who've never experienced medical gaslighting to really conceive that it actually happens. So that can be very validating. Another way to protect yourself from medical gaslighting is to audio record the appointment. Because we can receive a lot of information and a lot of technical information at our appointments, it can be hard to think and write at the same time, especially if we're experiencing brain fog. So audio recording the appointment may be the safest way to ensure that you're not missing any important information from that meeting. So the next challenge becomes, how do you get the doctor to buy into that? So you may decide to secretly record the appointment, or you may decide to seek the doctor's permission. And clients say that this is often best accomplished by explaining the context, that there's a lot of important information. Some of it can be technical. You have brain fog. It's hard to think and write at the same time. This is important information that you do not want to miss. And this is also the habit you have at other medical appointments. Hopefully by giving that context, you can get the doctor's buy-in to audio record the appointment. Just knowing that they're being recorded may decrease the chance or severity of the gaslighting you may experience. So one other thing to do is to reward yourself, regardless of how well or poorly the appointment went, is to intentionally give yourself a reward for getting through that stressful event. So those are some of the ways to prepare and protect yourself from medical gaslighting. But what have you found that helps you? And what have you found is not helpful? Put those in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with other folks in our community and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification button. And until next time, rest hard.